My brothers and sisters, my dearest children, if we have any today, indeed we are in the second week of or second Jum'ah of September. And we are in a time where there is a lot happening around us. There is election going to be called in a, in a, in a, in a short time. And there is something that is more important for me to, to explore in my first khutbah, which is going back to school for our children. In my last khutbah, I did, did talk and send a message to my loved ones, my children, the children, your children, the one whom we have so much hope on, the one whom Allah Azza wa Jal have uh, emphasized their, their, their value to us in the Quran and how all the prophets of Allah with no exception were praying to Allah Azza wa to give them children because they are eventually the assets for us in this dunya, in this life and also for us in the hereafter. As Ibrahim alayhi salam mentioned to Allah, Rabbi Rabbi Habli Hukman Wajali Lisana Dikran fil Akhirin. And also as Zakariya Rabbi Habli Mila Dunka Duriya Tantayiba. So it is indeed, and as Allah Azzawajal illustrated in Surah Al Furqan also, the dua of the believers, Rabbana Hablana min Azwajina wa Duriyatina Kurrata Ayunin Wajala Lil Muttaqina Imama. Bring for us spouses and children that please our eyes and make us from those who will be in the position of leadership for the, for the believers. So this is indeed an important issue that we need to not only be reminded about on once in a while, but to take actions. As our children were preparing themselves to go back to school, we would have variety of, of, of feelings among children. There are those who are very excited, can't wait until after the uh, long summer break and the long absence from the school and uh, because of the online uh, the schooling that they have done as a result of the pandemic, they can't wait to go back to be able to meet their friends, to be able to meet their teachers, to be able to go back to the normal life of, a, of pursuing their journey of education. And there are also on the other side, quite the opposite, completely uh, sad children who would feel the anxiety and also would even extremely have catastrophic feelings of going back to school as a result of certain experience they had in the past that have built some residue, that have left some residue and built some complex feelings in the back of their mind that prevent them from being able to enjoy go back to school. And there is, of course, those who are in between, who are having mixed feelings of excitement and ex the, the feelings of anxiety. And you probably have heard from your children the first day of school that I have butterflies in my stomach. What is important when they say to you that I am having butterfly feelings in my stomach is to lend them the ear of listening. That's what exactly they're calling you for. And that's exactly what we want to do in this, in, in, as they are going back to school. We want to take this as an opportunity for us to be able to build a better churching and nurturing connection with them. After all, they are our love. They are our hope. So we need to ensure that we're really investing in them. We need not to be just busy in this life by uh, running around and ensuring that we provide for them the materialistic things in life which are essentials. But also, we want to take the time. We want to find the, the, the moments of, 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 of connections with them and say, can, can you tell me how was your first day of school? Tell me more what happened to you in school. How did your first day of school went? Be a good listener to your children. Don't belittle their feelings, don't belittle their, their, their thoughts because the Prophet وسلم, said that We were asked the Prophets of Allah to communicate with people around us based on their level of understanding. Yes, the issues of revelry in school might be something silly for you that you have no interest to listen to. Yes, bullying in a school, that may be something that 
you would see that as little that is not worthy of paying attention to, that could be for you as an adult. But for them as children, it means everything for them in their life. They are experimenting in their life. They're, they're, they're trying to explore issues in their life. So take the time. Listen to them attentively. Try to understand what's behind their words. If they're overexcited, try to channel their energy of excitement in the right direction so that they're able to pursue their educational journey the right way. Give, build a rosy picture for them of how the school will be giving you the chance to live a good life, how you will be able to become a professional, how you will be able to become a successful individual, how you will be able to help yourself and help your family members, how you will be able to help your community, your country, the rest of the people on this earth. What are, what are the things, the possibilities that you are able to gain as a result of being a successful individual in school? On the other side, if you feel the gloom and bloom in their thoughts and in their eyes and their words, listen to them. And it does, not, it does not need an expert to be able to understand what your child is going through. If they're going through, through the, some difficult and harsh uh, feelings, try to find what are the cause of these feelings. Is it as a result of a bad interaction between them and the teachers in, in school? Try to diffuse this, these irrational thoughts because most of the time, and from my experience being an imam and a psychotherapist and a father and an also activist in the community with the youth, I found out that children, just like adults, they could have irrational feelings or irrational thoughts that could lead to catastrophic you know, thoughts in their minds that could be diffused easily if we were to interact with it the right way. The young man who came to the Prophet وسلم, said to him, Ya Rasulullah, He said to the Prophet وسلم, Ya Allah, Ya Rasulullah, allow me to, to do zina, fornication. Sahaba around him were over outraged. How we could be asking something like this from the Prophet of Allah? The Prophet وسلم, calmed them down and asked this young man to come to him. And he said to him, Would you like this to be happening to your mother? He said, No. Would you like this to happen to your own sister? I said, no. Would you like it to happen to anyone else? He said, no. He said, why would you like it to, why would you like to do it with other, others if you don't like it for yourself? So communicate rationally. Diffuse these, these irrational thoughts in their minds. If it is, as I said, as a result of bad interaction with the teachers, tell them, I am going to go with you the following day to school. I'm going to meet with your teacher and I'm going to talk to them and, and, and explain for them what your feelings are. And I'm going to have you to sit with your teacher to have a better interaction so we're, better, we're, we're able to find a better way of communication between you and, and, and the teachers in school or the teacher in school if they're in early stages in their education. If they're having problem with one of their peers in the classroom, then maybe you can communicate with the teacher and ask the teacher to communicate with the parents and try to resolve these issues between the two of them so they're able to feel comfortable enough to be able to make it in, into the classroom and be able to pursue their journey of education without being harassed or without being bullied. And bullying is something that, that does really exist in our schools and it is a problem. And there is so much talk about it. And we need to be part of the tool against diffusing and fighting bullying in the school and create more safe environment for our children to be able to go to school. Another important issue that we need to be also mindful about is the simple fact that we are as a community are, are dealing with a, a very serious problem that is called Islamophobia. The, the problems that have happened in the past and the recent one in London, Ontario, is still vivid in our children's mind. It's still vivid in our minds as, as adults. So there, there might be real feelings of anxiety or fear even in the minds of the children. More specifically, as I have said it over and over again with the, with the sisters, with, the, with our daughters, as they're trying to step in from out, out from their childhood and become adults 
And as they excitedly were putting their, their hijab for the first time outside in public, as they're, they're, they're demonstrating for themselves that I have become uh, an adult woman, young woman, we want to make sure that when they do that, they get the support needed for it. They would feel comfortable to do it. They would not be watching their back as they walk in the streets or they would not be getting this evil comments uh, of, of that, that would hurt them and would discourage them from, being, from wearing, being able to wear the hijab. We want our children whose names are, are recognized as Muslim names to, be to say proudly in the classroom, my name is Muhammad. My name is Ahmad. My name is this. My name is that. Without being worried or concerned that he would, could, they would be called back or nailed as a result or discriminated against as a result of this and, and of their names or the, their physical appearance or their cultural background. After all, we're all living in this beautiful country where we contribute all together to a better living for, for every one of us. These are real things that I want us for, to, to be able to deal with at home. Uh, build, build a different connection with your children. Alhamdulillah, hopefully you were, are, were able throughout the summer, especially as summer was, was easy enough for us to be able to go out and enjoy time with our family members and do some recreational activities. Do not discontinue this. Build on it. Have some time, uh, family time with your own children where you sit down with them at the end of every day possibly or at the end of every day once in a while or at least on the weekend or whenever you have time to talk to them and let them share with you their personal feelings. Let them let know what is happening with them in the school. Know if they are having some challenges academically. If they are, then seek the help for them. If you're able to help them yourself, alhamdulillah, so they can give them the self-esteem to be able to keep going. If not, then seek the help from outside. Alhamdulillah, we do have many resources in our community. And alhamdulillah, the university students, the college students, the MSAs in general, general speaking, are being very supportive and very helpful in these matters. Alhamdulillah. We are in this masjid, are trying our best by the leadership of the youth of our community to do whatever activities we can to re provide recreational activities for, for our youth, to provide for them the chance to be able to take the leadership positions in their life and to pave the road for them to become inshallah leaders. So pay attention to the activities that are happening around you in this, in this in the mosque or in the, in, the, in the community. And we need to um, uh, help them be able to engage in these activities. If they feel, if they have pessimistic feelings or, or views on engaging in these activities, again, talk to them. If you're unable to diffuse these pessimistic feelings, talk to the Imams, talk to the experts in the community, and inshallah will be able to uh, diffuse these feelings and encourage them and support them to, be, to help them be, be, become active members of our community. Take the time to build a leader. Because there's a beautiful saying, saying that leaders are, leaders are not born as leaders. Be leaders are built by their own parents. And as Umar ibn Abdul Aziz said, As-salahu min Allah wa tarbiyatu min al-abawain. There's a big role that you need to play. To play. Yes, school has played a big role in the academic journey of their life. And the masjid is doing its best to ensure that we provide the, the activities that are essential through the madrasa on the weekend or the week or the weeknights and, and, and try our best to provide for them the, the supportive environment. But there is a bigger role needs to happen in at home that is coming from both the parents, the mom, the father and the mother. For Allah's sake, life is not rosy. Those who think that life is, is built on love and affection, they are living in illusion. That's why Allah Azzawajal said in the Quran, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهَا أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمًا Allah did not say that وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَحَبَّةً Because mahabba is elastic. Today I love you because of the emotional feelings. Tomorrow I have a problem then I am not you know, so affected uh, in touch with you. But there's something called mawadda. And one of the beautiful tafasir about mawadda is children who will keep you connected. Invest in your children. 
Your children deserve the best. Don't be so selfish and look after your own interest, after your own ego, and ignore the needs of your own children. Your children need this environment of support from both parents. They need to come home and feel the mawadda and rahma. They need to come home and feel safe. They need not to go home and feel, oh, I'm going back home. I wish that I am not going to be able to go back home because of the fights that take place between the two sides, because of the arguments, because of the tension that is happening at home. This is, this is all as a result of shaitan intervention. For Allah's sake, for Allah's sake, your children are so vulnerable. They're so miskeen. They are so fragile. They're just like the clay. They are shaped early in their life the way you shape them. Make sure that you shape them the right way. Make sure that you plant in their minds and their hearts the love, the caring, the encouragement, the support that they need to be able to keep going in their life. That only would be possible if we were to have two supportive parents. As I said again, problems between the husband and the wife never ends. But let that be somewhere else, not in front of the children. Don't be silly and don't be selfish and say, I'm going to take the children on my side and prove to the other side that they are neglected, neglect, 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 neglectful to their own children. Because you need to be loving and caring with your children. But at the same time, you need to be assertive. Assertivity would not be possible unless the two sides agree in principles on what rules and values need to be implemented in the children's life. Because if one child, one parent is trying to implement and enforce certain value and the other parent diffuses that work, then children will be living in confusion. And as a result of that, their life will be chaotic. And as a result of that, no values will be applied in their life. No values will be implemented in their life. They will not be able to grow these values in their life. Step outside of your own egos. Step outside of your own self-interests. And put the interests of your own children ahead of you. Ahead of everything else. Because after all, when you leave this dunya, nothing will be in benefit for you. Except three things among them. Waladun salihun. A good child will pray for you. And that would not be possible unless you have a, lose, a, 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 a sleepless night, a, a very exhausting days of investing in this dunya. We want to be successful in our business. We invest a lot of energy. The same is to be said when you're investing in your children.